Hi everybody and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about a recent swim, a 11 and a half mile swim that we did. This will be part one of two and on our next video we'll talk about this video in the context of a long-term marriage. But welcome, let's get started. The swim I decided to do was two loops around Davis Islands located in downtown Tampa. It's about 11 and a half mile swim. When my friend Paul said, hey, do one loop in one direction and turn around and go in the opposite direction. So of course when he said, I don't think anyone's ever done that, that was definitely my cue to take on the challenge. So that's exactly what we did on September 11th. Today we'd like to talk about each mile. What went on between me the swimmer and Bob the kayaker. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let me just talk about the goals of the swim. My goal of this swim was to do it in under eight miles and to find a continuous, consistent pace. I'm working my way up beyond six and eight mile swims and I've fallen apart in the past at like mile nine or 10. I recently joined the Masters for the first time in my life and that is working on my skills and my speed and I've been doing that for about a month. But I did notice a difference and I think you did too that I'm getting stronger. Yeah, I could tell. Okay, so go ahead and get us started with uh, the beginning of the swim. So what I've done is I tracked it. I tracked the entire swim on my Garmin watch and then uh, was able to print out. I've got printouts of it here, but you won't see that. But I'll well, show some videos. In the video, you'll, we're going to show the, um, the actual diagram here, but it's mapped out every mile. So we thought we would just go through mile by mile, 11 miles total and it was around Davis Island here in Tampa. And if anybody's familiar with, well, people that are familiar with Tampa will definitely know what I'm talking about. It's the island, it's right in downtown Tampa. And it's roughly five and a half to six miles around, depending on how far away from the shore you swim it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it took us, it was about five and a half miles is what it came out to for us for roughly, you. for me. My, my watch, watch said almost 5.8 miles on the loops. So, so we got started at 6.35 a.m. in the dark. And my issues as a swimmer during that first mile was I was a little, a little annoyed. Um, you said, oh, the sun's coming up. We don't need anything. There aren't any boats out here. We'll be fine. Well, I wanted to see the kayak and it was pretty much pitch dark. And it would have been nice to have a little blinking red light on the end because sunrise was at 7.15. So it was very dark the first 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but uh, it turned out to be a very strong mile. My, my goggles were foggy. I couldn't see you. Where's the kayak? But I ended up having a pretty good time for that first mile. So what was your experience of the first mile, Bob? That was my experience. Get in the flow pick up a pace everything was just going along pretty nice so like lynn mentioned it was dark and the sun was coming up in about 40 45 minutes so i knew that it would be starting to get bright really quick so that's why i didn't worry too much about the light and it, since it's downtown tampa it's a big city there's plenty of ambient light around too so so if you're looking up you know the, the water is really dark but if you're looking up and around you can see yeah for you i thought for you, you could see well enough for and you. there weren't any boats out at that time anyway there was actually one fisherman going out yeah when we were going we but. did start at the south end of the island a boat ramp located near the yacht club and it was pretty dark over there there was no city lights really so from my perspective it was a dark star but that was fine so what was your experience of the first mile? The first mile was leaving and we headed, we headed south. I mean, well, it's at the south end of the island. So it's, we headed basically south and clockwise. then west. So we're doing a clockwise loop around the island, the first one. And that first mile was relatively easy. I mean, Lynn did it in about, the, the well, my, you know, 33 minutes. Yeah, for the first mile mm -hmm. is what I clocked on my, um, my watch. And that is pretty fast. So that's for open water. That's good for me. Yeah. Now it's so a 1.8 mile per hour average pace. And move. And I took a first feed of about eight ounces of electrolyte, and I opened up a goo, and that took me a long time to kind of open it up 
and I won't be using that product when, once I finish with it. The yeah. first mile also didn't involve a stop. So it was because oh, we true. started at the beginning, started it, and then we stopped at a mile. So that's exactly all swimming, 33 minutes. True. So that's probably why it's really a lot shorter than the other ones too, because from then on, obviously, the time is mm -hmm. going to be encompassing some of the stops, and well, all of the stops. Yeah. Now, I don't really have much to say about the clockwise direction. I did the total in about three hours and 25 minutes, which was fantastic for me for five point, almost 5.8 miles. I was settling in. I'm really happy that I've, I'm doing bilateral breathing. Every third stroke, I would take a breath. I settled in. I did that probably for 70% of this swim, whereas in the past, I would maybe do 10% of bilateral breathing. That seemed to work out very well for me. I did notice a couple, uh, like a slower pace than I would like. And so what that cued me onto is swimming on the outside of Davis Island, feeling slightly slower, meant to me when we turned around that might be a little bit of a faster swim later on coming back. So I was looking forward to that. But I pretty much settled in, settled in mile two, three, and four. And Bob can tell you what his experience as a kayaker was. And when it changed for me was when we rounded the hospital where the current came in from Hillsborough River. Whoo, it started pushing me towards the wall near the hospital. And then um, I caught myself and then I got caught in a, in a nice current and finishing up the loop. So I know he would say mile by mile, but I really don't have any anything else to offer that it, it scooped me a little bit, it pushed me a little bit faster, mile four, five, and six. Five. Two, mile mm -hmm. one, 33 minutes. Mile two was 46 minutes, almost 47 minutes, but that involved mm -hmm. a stop. And Lynn thought there might have been a little current going. We were heading north at that point on the western side of the island. I don't, I didn't really think there was a current, but there could have been. Against me, um, slightly against. Yeah, against us that time, yeah. heading north. So 40 minutes on the third mile. Okay, and then the fourth cool. mile was rounding the tip that Lynn talked about of the island. And mm -hmm. as you round it, so the Hillsborough River drains into Tampa Bay right there at that northern tip. And so that's where the current is the worst coming down from there. Plus, we also had a tide that was going out. So it was kind of, I think it was kind of a double whammy on the current. The tide's going out at the same time the Hillsborough River flows out all the time anyway. So once we rounded that curve at the northern tip, mile four ended up being 37 minutes, and then mile five, which was entirely down the eastern side of the Set island, going with the current, 28 minutes. So Lynn was flying. That's then. great. Awesome. If I could have, if every That's mile great. could be between 28 and, and 33 <laughs> minutes, I'd be happy. But this, yeah. this looking at my times here, disappoint me as you hear on the, on the second loop, which was a completely different swim. What was interesting about this swim around Davis Island, it was two swims within one. Going clockwise, doing that in three hours and 25 minutes was great. And I finished the total in eight hours and 22 minutes. So this turning around going counterclockwise took about four hours and 50 minutes. That's a big difference, but there was current, there was conditions. Actually, the conditions were pretty good. It was overcast. It was about, the water temp was about 85 degrees and at parts, it could have been close to 90. It felt very, very hot, almost like a hot tub. And um, I just would say that it was overcast, so it was nice not to be hot sun. It only got bright sunny and Bob put his hat on the last hour and a half. And we finished up at around three, 315 I'm not sure but anyway you're so getting ahead here. I'm getting you're ahead to go through every mile I don't need to go skip we, right I, to the end I want to push <laughs> uh, this is going to be longer than 20 minutes I I don't know no, but go ahead not. I don't really have anything else to say until the turnaround okay unless you do well you. that's it after that coming down the eastern side now we're heading back toward the uh the public boat launch so mile five and then five and a half roughly to 5.8 is when we made the turnaround and then started heading back north going counterclockwise. And that immediately is when we hit the current because that's on that side of the island and we're heading right back into the current. So and up to mile six ended up being 46 minutes. But then mile seven, which is all against the current, straight up the side of the island into the current was 
58 minutes. Mm -hmm. And mile eight, which was at the worst part of it, heading north and then rounding the tip of the island at the north by the into the worst of it by the hospital that Lynn already mentioned some of. At one point by that hospital, we were like inching along and I'm wondering if uh, yeah. we were going to make it around the top because the current was going so much. Yeah, so, so you much. thought maybe we would need to turn around I, and well, just I, give up on that? A couple of points. Actually, during mile, the whole way up, I'm wondering. So that's interesting because I didn't so, feel that. I, what I would say, although I was moving slowly and there were a couple of, my watch buzzes every 500 yards. And when the current was with me, I knew seven minutes, eight minutes to go 500 yards was a great time. And I thought, ooh, if I turn around, if we decide to turn around, because I hadn't 100% committed to doing the lap turning around. When we, you know, I was going really fast and I knew, oh, it, payback is hell. You're, you're going to, you're doing great now. And you're seeing well, the yep. bottom of the water go behind and you quickly if I turn around. Here was the payback. So what, what, let me tell the story. Okay, go ahead. Because <laughs> Lynn, Lynn is swimming along and all of a sudden she sticks her head up out of the water and goes, oh, 17 minutes. And then sticks her head back down in the water. And I at think the time, I said I'm 17. like, what is 17? Yeah, I said yeah. 17. Yeah. Okay. And uh, 17 minutes. And I'm wondering, what the heck is 17? Then I find out later that's that was her 500 yard time was 17 minutes. And that, that's how much slower it was mm. going against the, uh, the current. And the but was... I'm, I'm going to give Lynn credit here that right. she swam mm -hmm. that entire time just going, just doing it, not complaining, just, just doing her thing and moving slowly through the, the current and not complaining, even the worst part of it up at the end there. And then when she realized it was going so bad, she actually dug in a little more and we started moving a little faster and we got around the top. I it's knew no the problem. reward so was, I, I'm was. very familiar with that body of water. So that's a good thing. There was nothing unexpected. I didn't, I knew what was coming and I knew if I could get past the hospital and that took 23 minutes for, for 500 yards was the, was the longest. And you know what? I went into this with a really good attitude. I wasn't going to complain. I thought of Shelly Stewart, who is always smiling and happy and never complains. Mm. And I, I used her as an example as I was swimming. I'm like, you know, what, how would she be? And I just, uh, I really like the swim community because I think of the other good, strong swimmers who have good attitudes. I'm somewhat of a complainer. I, I might feel like giving up, but I don't. And I just kept a pace. Uh, now I do hate hearing these numbers, you know, an mm. hour and eight minutes or 58 minutes. But it makes me think, Bob, that sometimes in an open water swim, we should not be focused on how much time it takes you. We should fo I was focusing on my technique, on my stroke, on the things I've been learning a little bit in the last month, and how I was just very strong. I felt consistently strong. I prepared myself during, during mile four through six. I was preparing myself for difficulty if we were going to turn around and I don't know if you remember when we got to the end of the first loop Bob should we just continue on do you really want to turn around yeah. and, and we were like no let's go for it I had a friend yeah. I had an outing that evening and I really needed to be done by eight hours to get home to go out to uh, dinner and, and a community theater performance so I really didn't have the luxury of taking however long it took I really needed to be done in eight hours so I'm glad I, you know, took on the challenge and, and turned around and, and went the hard way. It, it builds character. If I had done two loops, I probably would have been done in seven hours. That would be great. I think in 2022, I want to try doing two loops in the same direction and to really see if I can keep consistency. I couldn't really compare did I keep consistency by going in a different direction. But Yep. Okay. So let's just skip ahead so that was the northern so as far as the mile times once we made that turn at the northern part and started heading back down south on the western side now back the other way mm -hmm. 38 minutes for that mile and then mile 10 she finished in 42 minutes so that's what impressed me so much about Lynn swimming was that she swam she just paddled and paddled I was yeah. doing the paddling yeah. she was doing the swimming um, she swam the whole time just constantly going even through that current heading north 
and all the way up through mile 10. And I would say that's consistent, 38 minutes and 42. It felt consistent. I sometimes took longer on my feed breaks I, on some of those miles, but I, I felt like I was really in a good pace and was feeling very strong up until mile 10. And so what happened at mile nine and 10? All right, my shoulders weren't getting sore. Oh, I don't know if I told you, but I developed a very slight cramp near my ribs for only, hmm. only maybe 10 strokes because I just used visualization and I talked to myself, okay, go away cramp, you are unwelcome. Hmm. And I know that if I was cramping in my legs or my arms, it could be dehydration. I did worry about dehydration. I don't, I didn't, don't think I had any dehydration issues. So I had a cramp just maybe for 10 strokes the tops of my front of my legs, um, uh, like, you know, below the groin or the, the top of my legs there felt a little exerted. And I talked with the, um, the coach today and she said, it's possible I could have been kicking more with my knees than my hips. And I don't really think I kick, you know, power emanating from my knees. Anyways, so that was minor. My lower back was a little, a little irritated, but I really didn't have any problems. But what happened to me on mile 10, I didn't fall apart, but I suddenly had um, intestinal pain, like digestion pain. And I'm like, oh. So what I did at each mile, what I would take an electrolyte drink, approximately eight ounces, and I would have like um, a small thing of like baby food or a goo. And I was feeling strong. I felt like it was great fuel all 10 miles. And then it caught up with me and I told Bob, I said, oh, I feel nauseous or I feel like I'm going to throw up. And what did you say? I said, just push through it. Get tough. And, I, and he said something and I else. Said, yeah, I said something else. I said, well, can you just throw up while you're swimming? And, I'm, <laughs> I, and that made water. me angry. I put my face <laughs> in the water. I'm like, what, know, the, what the heck? Throw up and poison. swim. And I'm like, ugh. So I just, you know, just kept going. And so the stomach ache was, eh. And maybe at, at the next stop, I just had a little bit of water and kept going. And then I, I slowed down. And, and then at some point, like a half a mile to a quarter mile out, I threw up like four or five times. And I made sure Bob saw this because when he said throw yeah. up and swim, I was like, I really was sick yeah. and I got it out of my system and I was going slow. My arms got a little fatigued, but not enough to like stop the race. And then I kept looking at my watch and I'm like, oh, I got to have to meet my friend. Should we just, I, mm. I was tempted to just hang on to the end of the kayak and row and get me to the end. And he, you were like, we're almost there, we're almost there. And then I kind of got a little mad. What do you mean we're almost there is another 20 or 30 minutes. And it probably was another 20 well, minutes. Well, it's all relative. Because uh, I was going After slow. an eight-hour swim, <laughs> 20 minutes is almost there. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, I'll, I'll give that um, to you. That's what yeah. I was thinking. So we came around that southern tip of the island pretty much where mile 10 was like at the southern tip and we were on that corner and I could see the end where we have to turn the corner and then we're right there at the boat yeah. launch. So, but I, I would say that overall this swim, it's always interesting about what, what is your expectation? Uh, I was very pleased with it. I was pleased that I was consistent. I was strong. I finished it. I didn't finish it weak. I didn't fall apart. I learned a lot about what I, I need to change my feeds or do something about that. Um, Let's see, mentally I was very, I was very uh, positive attitude. And how did you feel as a kayaker? Do you get sore sitting in a kayak for eight hours and 22 minutes? Yeah, you have to get used to that. So my, so you don't have to paddle that much, but just holding the paddle for that long too, I found like my arms, my shoulders, and in the back, you know, my back. I could start feeling it after eight hours of sitting in the kayak. But, but you're pretty, um, you do training your own for kayaking. You do both legs. Well, I do weightlifting. Yeah, some mild, strength. some easy strength training to try to. So would you say your back under. and upper body is very important? Does your butt get sore sitting there or do you shift and yeah, move I around? Have to, I have to shift around a little bit to keep the blood flow into my legs sometimes. And the, the seats aren't necessarily really comfy, but it's not, it's not unbearable. And Definitely. it's funny, I mean, you're, after a while, you're, you just get used to the sitting there. And, 
and your yeah. knuckles got a little sunburned. You know, your your hands oh, go yeah. around the oars, so you get a little sunburn the, the on the fingers. The tops of my hands, hands, from like my wrist <laughs> up to my yeah. my knuckles, got some sun. <laughs> All right. If you have any comments or questions, uh, just leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you've got any advice for me on feeds, let me know. I've been reaching out to some swim friends who swim longer distances. What do they use? And everybody is different, and I have to just continue to experiment. Uh, these swims are experimental. And But what was really fascinating about this swim was it did not feel like one continuous swim. It felt like two swims within one because I changed hmm. direction and changing directions brought, also as it got a little bit later, when we were heading back in counterclockwise direction against the current down Seddon Channel, the boat traffic picked up and Bob kind of kept me closer to the wall and the rocks. And one thing I didn't like was some speeding boats were going by, speeding let's say 25 to 30, 35 miles an hour. And their waves were coming over, hitting the wall, kind of coming back at me. So I was kind of just annoyed at um, that everything wasn't nice and calm and the red carpet wasn't rolled out for yeah. me during this swim, that I had to adapt to boaters. And at one point, I, was, I didn't feel like I was bringing my arm to stroke fully because I felt Bob was too close, that his paddle was good, his oar was going to oh, hit me. I was too close. I lost and he track did hit me point. twice, and I got mad. And yeah. I know sometimes I'm loud, and there were some guys by a Coast Guard boat and it didn't hurt, but it was just annoying. And I said, I don't know what I said. Can you just get away from me, get move over, away. get further away, and move over? And then as I turned, I, you know, I saw some of those guys kind of smiling. Yeah, I think just, here, yeah, here watch, we are fighting out, out <laughs> having an argument fighting on the water, out there fighting on the water. But it was it was very <laughs> peaceful. It was nice. Yes, the water quality had some issues. Ugh, petroleum for a quarter of a mile somewhere, and then like uh, sewage kind of near the hospital. But um, for the most part, it, the water wasn't overly salty, and that's just the chance you take when you go out into the water. You know, we have to really keep our waterways clean and just um, respect the water so that we can enjoy it and use it. And I don't really have anything else to say about the swim. In our next video, I'd like to talk about how we can put that in the context of marriage. So is there anything oh, else yeah. in your experience of this kayak adventure nope, i think we covered covered it, most of it, most of it. all righty and if i have if we have anything else to say about the swim we can we can do it in our next video so yep. thank you for watching yep. and we'll see you next time thank you okay bye